Hi, my name's Jess and I blog at Elven Garden Quilts. I'm going to demonstrate how I quilt a spiral design on my free motion, on my domestic machine. Um, you can see a little bit of what I've done already up here. <coughs> so I'll just keep going from where I am here. As you can see I start with a fairly small spiral in the center <clears throat> and then echo out around that. I just find it's a little bit easier to keep your curves quite smooth if you start with a fairly small shape in the center. So they look like they're sitting in behind each other. I tend to uh, travel stitch up the side of some of those spirals. I'm not too worried. I've got a bit of a funny shape along the edge there, but because I'm going to be quilting the charcoal section next to it, I'm not too phased about leaving that as a, that space there. One of the really great things about spirals is you can keep echoing them as many times as you want to end up where you need to be. So I could choose to go up here and start another spiral at the top, but I think I'll probably do two more. So I end up back down here to keep quilted so I can work my way down onto that spot. Half of crop free motion quilting is kind of thinking about where you need to go next. I've only got a narrow section here I'm going to do a tiny spiral and then just echo the sides of it there's travel stitching so it sits a little bit behind that spiral and then just echoing that curved shape out to fill that space I do tend to go pretty slowly with these just because it's a lot of stopping and starting with short lines. And then I'll do a couple more on this side as well. Because I've ditch stitched a lot of the uh, seams on this already. I'm not needing to stop and remove pins all that often, which is really good. Now, I'd rather keep start up again just behind. So, I'm going to do one more echo, which gives me a lot of space to start quilting a big one here. I want it to end up being quite big I still only start with a fairly small shape because I just find it easier to get that to be quite circular it's also much easier to estimate the distance like to get an even distance between your the lines in your spiral if you start quite small
as you can see I do tend to try to keep the space between my lines on the spirals fairly consistent. Um, that's just a personal choice. You can also do it and have varying, varying distances between those rings and it still looks really fantastic and gives quite a different texture. do one extra echo just to bring my just to fill that space just at the space behind my machine there I realize that will kind of quilt myself into a corner but because I've got the seams I'll be able to travel stitch back along those to get back to where I want to be Because it looks to me like I've got an extra one there, I am going to come back down here, which will work out well for quilting that triangular section down at the bottom there. So I'll aim to fill in this triangular bit here before I work my way back up the other side of the zigzag. I think because of the sort of the size of those spaces that I've got left, I think I will make this a giant one and do one final echo up to the top again. That size sort of curve is really tricky to keep really smooth. Um, you can see I've got a kind of a few flat spots, which is I tend to avoid doing them quite that big, but in that circumstance it just worked for where I needed to get to. my lines fairly wide apart on spirals these probably about a half an inch gap between the two lines uh, but you can do it as small or as large as you want or even mix it up and have a few closer spaced ones in amongst some wider spacing ones just work my way back along this same line. I'm actually quite close to the edge of the quilt now so I'm not having to deal with much rolled up which is really nice.
I normally would have my hands a bit closer, like kind of in this position, but I'm trying to keep them back away so that you can see what I'm doing a bit more easily. So you can see when I back myself into a corner, I do tend to just travel stitch a little way. about the red light under my foot I've actually got a stitch regulator on my machine so I don't have to use my foot pedal I just move the fabric and the needle goes up and down automatically uh, I love it because uh, I can just really focus on where I'm moving the fabric rather than having to think about coordinating the foot pedal and my movement Sorry about the lack of talking with this one, I just think it's easier to show you what I'm doing than try to describe most of it. don't have a whole lot of space coming up here I don't really want to do another echo around this spiral because it's gotten quite massive so I'm actually just gonna start quilting and I'll probably include some of the batting as well in this quilting um, just to make sure I'm doing a full spiral but not all of it will actually end up on the quilt could prove tricky. That worked okay. Now I'll just do that little spiral a couple of times till I can get myself back over into this larger space behind my machine. I've got room for one final spiral at the top here. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, thanks for watching and you can always check out my blog The Elven Garden for more tips and tricks on free motion quilting and lots of other stuff. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>